Oh, no, you never met the reaper man? And yet you say you swim to China and you wanted to sell me South Carolina? I believe you know the reaper man. Did you ever meet the funny Has reaper man? I've been paying attention. And pardon us for not getting our reaper man music up there. I know we really sorely missed that. Maybe we can hear it at the end of the segment. But as Coca mentioned, this week we're having with us uh, a guest from the Grassroots Organization. Last week we had Janica Ryersy here explaining why Grassroots is going for this UN type of campaign this year. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this with Michael. Michael was the founder of the earliest known American pot legalization organization known as Grassroots and it was founded in 1966 in Vermont and in 1973 in Arizona and so as you can see Michael has been a veteran of the movement for 13 years now he uh, has just gotten out of jail on a pot and acid bust and uh, he's a native New Yorker but he's not one of those usual New York movement people that we're always seeing on the show so in this way it's a little bit re Refreshing to have him here. And last week on the tape we showed, uh, that was Michael in front of the Isaiah Wall at the UN. He was kicking off the grassroots campaign this year. And Michael, I'd just like to welcome you to the show and pass you this joint. All righty. Always good to be here. Well, I'm glad. Last yeah. time I saw you was um, 77 when I came up with uh, Roy Shearer on the old High Witness show. Right, and Coco was the floor manager on that mm -hmm. show putting our microphones on us, but it's really great to have you back. And actually, the last time I probably saw you in print was way back in this January of 77 High Times issue, uh, of which I was the editor, and uh, I guess that caused you a few problems. Well, you... kind of drew some heat on me, uh, saying that, uh, you know, I had gone on the lam, um, and that my lawyer oh. didn't know exactly where I was, didn't help uh, <laughs> running around, you know, dealing with state troopers and whatnot to have smoke-ins during the campaign. But um, and it's interesting, I, I would hope maybe uh, in, the, in this 80 campaign, since there's new management over there that in high times, that there might be uh, some kind of a grassroots page or something about politics where, uh, you know, on the campuses, which uh, is our ballywick, if you would, the campus route, Mm -hmm. um, that something might be in there every month about what's going on on the campuses because they're certainly not dead, you know, from my experience. And in the last six months, I, while on parole, I was popping up and down at different campuses around the country and uh, mostly in the West. And uh, what we tried was uh, to initiate this UN campaign in 74 at Expo. Mm. And so this is like the culmination of five years bringing it to the UN. And uh, I'm hoping that... Uh, the activism that we're talking about in the No Nukes thing, with uh, the combination of music and uh, and a popular initiative type uh, issue, um, that some of the groundwork that grassroots organizations and other pro pot groups, uh, Virginians studying marijuana laws in Virginia and um, in Montana, there's another group besides uh, Normal, etc. Um, each of these groups that have tried so hard in the past to keep uh, not only pot, but um, the initiative referenda route, populist initiative, um, popular enough until we had this uh, majority vote. We're probably the fastest growing minority in the country, if you, uh, you know, voting age, if you, if you really look at it. The 18 to 46 right, are in that right. age. So um, that's kind of like where we're at there. now. Well, tell us more about this UN thing. Now, uh, a caller last week, remember at the end of the show, called up, and uh, we couldn't hear him too well because we had a little trouble with uh, something with the phone. But I think what he said, as we saw the tape, was why the UN route. He, for some reason, didn't right. think this would be successful. And maybe you can explain what is important about the UN in this Well, if you, if you look on, on the one hand, um, all the marijuana laws base their um, initial passage on the U.S. Marijuana Tax Act of 1937, which um, um, was found to be unconstitutional in the Leary case. So if you jerk um, that bottom card away, eh, that started it all, and then on the other end you have the perspective that um, the Alaska legislature passed what in essence is a total legalization including home cultivation for private use, and the first time that it was challenged was in the state Supreme Court. We have a 54-page, five-to-nothing decision that has never been challenged again. 
mm -hmm. um, kind of as the open door on that end, then the only thing that remains in the middle is the Single Convention Treaty Act, which um, ridiculously and uh, defies anybody who can use library cards uh, knowledge of that this is, uh, has no beneficial medical uses, uh, and yet um, we're spending six million dollars a year in federal funds to have uh, all kinds of research. And I understand not one covers uh, females right. at all. Right, females and, are allowed to participate. And we know that more women, are, younger women, are smoking not only cigarettes, but that puts them in the, in the, in the possibility or susceptibility of trying marijuana, right, right, having right. smoked but once something. <laughs> um, and yet there's no, uh, I think women should be really teed off about that. I hope they come down yeah, with that's benefit on the first. And I had suggested an article like that to Ms. and they, you know, wanted to hear more details about it. But, you know, that really is a fact. None of these experiments uh, uses women. And uh, none of them has really pr proved conclusively that marijuana is harmful for you, of course. Um, and I know, you know lots of women who uh, smoke uh, marijuana or use it in their teas and, and, um, and they're nursing, um, or even while, uh, while they're still pregnant. So, um... As far as the Single Convention Treaty Act goes, you'd think these nations who had signed it would actually be embarrassed because I think right now there's like 10 or 12 states in the U.S. who have obtained right. permission from the federal government to do medical research, you know, for the medical use of marijuana. They're having a hard time getting the government THC. It's right. The, it's, well. the same, it's the same bottleneck, you know. Um, if, if, if people are really interested and, and want to do something here mm -hmm. in, in, in New York, um, trying to set uh, uh, a national headquarters here uh, in New York to deal strictly with the UN. Um, we're going to have a benefit down at the Nameless Theater on uh, on October 1st, which is the day that the uh, the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act um, finally was passed. Right, the day and of infamy. Well, it became yeah, the day of infamy. It became uh, a law on October the 1st, and um, what we're going to do is have 12 hours of artists and writers and poets and uh, musicians and stuff, people coming by and, and, uh, and talking and laying out their rap. Um, hopefully, we'll have people coming from all over the city on their way home and whatnot um, to sign the petition to the UN, which is calling for the Secretary General to request of the U.S. delegation a motion to review the Single Convention Treaty Act in this session. And I, the, for just for those uh, of our viewers who don't know this, this is a proper function that the Secretary General of the UN has that, always had. If uh, right. he is sort of the ombuds in a way for the citizens of any country who who have petitioned, you know, maybe their representatives and don't feel they're they're being heard, uh, he can make the suggestion if he feels that that is warranted. And, and in this by getting case, petitions in this signed, particular case, he has no knowledge in his office of numerous violations violations of this treaty by other countries that have signed it. Now, by violations I mean that in some countries there are only jail and Americans. There's 1,600 Americans still in jail, 600 of whom are in foreign jails. Probably as big a bunch in American jails and on probation and parole as were down at the Battery the other day for the anti -nurse. Right, oh, more. When, well, there's 200, I, uh, oh, I understand there's 150 to 200,000 still on probation and parole mm. and still in prisons in the United States, but there's 1,600 in foreign jails, 600 of whom have what uh, could be construed as being um, private possessions, uh, right. um, accommodation sales to consent aid adults, um, and, and local people in those countries are not being prosecuted the same way as Americans are. Um, so consequently what we have is a, a discriminatory practice at the international level and so therefore, um, we have only one way to go, and that's straight to the Secretary General, it would seem to me. Mm -hmm. Now, we started in 74, so this is like five years. Anybody wants to help us out, we sure need to help. Yeah, I understand you're using uh, any kind of artist talents or artworks that they might be able to donate to the benefit. Or, right. or people so want to know, can they can touch. call us and leave right. word at the hotel. Or Yeah, call. we'll flash up that address and sign again, and you can call Grassroots at, at this number that's given. and. Uh, get in line for helping out at that benefit on October 1st and it's all building up to a big rally at the UN at on the end October of October. October 26th, which 26. is, right, um, which is um, a Friday, 